Hey everyone! So most of you probably know about a little game called No Man's Sky. It just came out this week and generated tons of hype leading up to its release, promising endless space exploration, generating quintillions of planets for you to explore and scavenge never-before-seen technology. So today, we are going to look at how that procedural generation works. But note that while I haven't seen the source code firsthand, I don't literally know how the game works. These are my best guesses based on interviews and basic concepts of procedural generation. So without further ado, let's take a look at how No Man's Sky works. In No Man's Sky, when you approach a planet for the first time, its terrain and life forms are all generated on the fly and they get more detailed as you get closer to the planet. And once you leave, they essentially disappear. What's most impressive to me is that you or a friend could go to hundreds of millions of different planets again and again and find the exact same terrain perfectly preserved. Much of this crafty procedural generation is done with fractals, which are hard to formally define in a short video, so I won't. All you need to know is that in a fractal, every part is self-similar to every other part, like how one floret of broccoli looks like the rest of the branch, or how branches of smaller blood vessels have a similar structure and appearance to larger arteries. This is in contrast to this triangular structure, which is self-identical, where every part is exactly the same as the whole with no variation. It's safe to say there are no truly self-identical structures in nature because there are always irregularities. But we can use these general patterns and irregularities in fractals to simulate natural forms in games, like varied tree branches and mountainous terrain, or use them to generate noise for cloud textures. One way we can do this is by examining the formulas that describe fractals. These are usually described recursively, meaning for example, let's say one broccoli sprout is the base case, we can find a recursive rule, an equation, or set of instructions that generates a broccoli stalk from those individual sprouts. The Mandelbrot set is probably one of the most famous fractals with the equation z equals z squared plus c, where z is a complex number and c is a constant representing the origin or wherever you want to center it. In any case, that's one simple example. They can get pretty crazy, but no matter what, the fractals formula will always generate the same image. In game terms, this means we could create and maintain a planet or at least a big chunk of its information without having to take up a ton of memory. My guess is that when you visit a planet for the first time, some sort of key is generated which can describe that formula or blueprint for the planet's layout. Maybe different parts of the key hash to certain values, I don't know, but a key with maybe a hundred, maybe even only 20 or 50 characters could be translated to a bunch of variables that deterministically create that same planet again and again. They'll always map to the same values and give you the same environment. This is all just speculation, but I am pretty sure that those 18 quintillion planets or their keys or information will never all be created sitting in a database somewhere waiting for you to go visit them. And I'm pretty sure this is the basic idea of how you're able to get a completely unique planet whenever you decide to explore somewhere new. I think a common frustration though is that while planets are mathematically unique, not all of them feel aesthetically or experientially unique. And this is kind of to be expected. If you multiply every possible value of every variable that determines a planet, I'm sure there are 18 quintillion possibilities, but not every value and not every variable will dramatically impact that experience. Like in a simple sense, if we have three types of shirts and 500 colors, we can make 1500 tops. If we add a second color, like to the trim, we can get 750,000 possible tops. From here, the more features we add, the more rapidly the number of possible unique combinations will inflate. And let's say we go shopping and browse through these shirts one by one, we'll get bored pretty quickly as soon as we realize they're all iterations of the same simple pattern even though there are so many options. And while No Man's Sky is way more complex than this, 
I think some of these patterns do become apparent after enough play. For some, that's a problem. For me, I really believe in the vision and the effort of the team more than anything. You know, there are very few games that are truly the first of their kind these days. Like, there are a lot of creatively fresh ideas around, but I do feel like this game is one of the first to use procedural generation at this scale, and it takes bravery to make the first complete, relatively popular project exploring those new areas in technology. Regardless of anything, I'm excited to see where procedural generation goes in the industry and how games and technology can push each other forward. That's all for this week, but if you enjoyed this, definitely subscribe for more videos on technology and games, and let me know what kind of topics or titles you're interested in hearing about in the comments below. I do keep track of requests. But most importantly, have a happy day wherever you are. I'll see you guys soon. Bye!